This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Sunday morning, August the 26th. I'm James Spann. Brian Peters is up on an Alaskan cruise. Missing all of this excitement, so I'm filling in for him uh, doing a weekend shift here. But let's get in there and see if we can answer all of your questions. And quite frankly, a lot of them we cannot answer at this point, but some we can. Uh, first off, uh, we'll take a look at the big picture. This is the water vapor satellite view, and that's a pretty standard late August look. The primary westerlies, the primary storm track, and the mid-latitudes are up north up on the Canadian border with a series of waves there. The flow down here is rather ill-defined. There is kind of a wavy ridge, a 588 ridge across the Gulf Coast region. And uh, the state of that ridge will greatly determine where Isaac goes. Now, this is the OZ QPF from last night. As I do this update this morning, the 12Z map, the new one is not out yet. I'll post that up on the blog. And at that point, that, that, that eastward track looked likely. And uh, the guidance has a foot of rain for Roanoke, a foot of rain up there in North Georgia. And you can see how the gradient is very, very tight. The big range will be east of the circulation center. And that's going to be adjusted again. Uh, in fact, based on the new track, that would be adjusted farther west, putting much of Alabama in that uh, 6 to 12 inch range. And that's, that's a whole lot of water here. This is drought busting rain. It really is. So, again, one of the issues inland will be the potential for flooding rains. Uh, with numbers like that, very possible. The bulk of it for inland Alabama would be on Wednesday, maybe into Wednesday night. But let's look at Isaac. Uh, there's the broad uh, image of the tropics, and we do have that wave out in the uh, uh, East Atlantic that we'll deal with later. I, I think that's going to be a recurving system. Now, Isaac uh, this morning is not a very well-organized tropical cyclone. It's trying to organize on the north coast of Cuba, and you can see some convection near the center, but uh, clearly it's having a hard time. Uh, maximum sustained winds are at 65 miles an hour based on reconnaissance data. Uh, there's a look at the current analysis, and you look down there in the lower left, and you can see uh, uh, the pressure according to the uh, ruck analysis here is 998 millibars. And we'll be watching pressure tendencies carefully. And ahead of that, you've got tropical uh, rain bands over uh, the Florida Keys. That's the Key West radar early this morning. And uh, again, nothing serious there. But obviously, uh, they are on lockdown today in the Florida Keys, uh, bracing for the impact of this thing. And of course, the question is, can it strengthen rapidly into a hurricane? And it could very well. Uh, it would be a minimal hurricane, but uh, that always impacts the Keys in a great way. Uh, model spread, yep, it's just not good it's all over the board i mean you got one camp that brings it up toward new orleans and it keeps the northwest track going uh, into even in northeastern texas before the recurvature happens you got one camp that brings it up into the florida panhandle recurving and on that track the heavy rain would be east of here but the the better blend brings it up toward the mississippi gulf coast and that puts alabama on that bad east side uh just for the fun of it here, we'll look at the uh, GFS, and it brings it really a little west of New Orleans. Uh, this would be uh, Tuesday night, Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock. And keep in mind, the GFS keeps that thing moving northwest. It really doesn't turn north up this way. And on that track, it would be uh, kind of wet and unsettled here, but uh, not a flooding-type situation. And if you want some real model madness, how about the RPM? This is our in-house model, and that is an outlier to the east. It brings it in east of Apalachicola, almost toward Apalachee Bay, uh, up toward uh, Tallahassee. And, of course, if that's the case, we'd be on the dry side. So I think it is important to note that the model spread is great and understand, you know, people are asking, well, what about uh, Anniston? What about East Deboga? What about Fayette? What about Cullman? Look, it, it makes no sense to ask those questions. We're trying to figure out what states this thing will affect at this point. Uh, tropical systems are large, but they're not symmetrical in terms of the impact. And, you know, it's everybody on the east side is going to have the, the worst impact of this thing. Uh, let's look at the intensity forecast. Here's another problem. You know, it, it looks like to us this thing's going to cross the loop current in the Gulf and uh, the upper air winds are very favorable for strengthening, but quite frankly, some very reliable intensity guidance here is not ramping this up. Uh, almost all the models bring it to a Category 1 hurricane. They all do. you got an outlier that brings it to a Category 3, that Hurricane Wharf model. But, uh, uh, you know, in addition to being 
The upper air winds are favorable and the water is warm. You've also got to have the right inner structure of this thing for strengthening. And apparently they're seeing something within the inner structure that would keep it as a Category 1. Uh, a lot of logic would dictate this thing could be a major hurricane at the time of landfall. But again, you have to respect this guidance. So the guys at the Hurricane Center are, are you know, respecting that as well. And I think they've got it a Category 2 at landfall. But understand clearly, both at this point, the point of landfall and the intensity at landfall Nobody knows, and I mean nobody. Everybody's got an opinion like a belly button, but nobody knows at this point. There's just too much uncertainty. we got to get this thing organized. we got to look at the structure and get it closer in. Uh, this is the official track coming from the uh, Hurricane Center, and uh, they've been shifting west over the past 24 hours, and they've got it coming into Mobile Bay just after midnight uh, Tuesday night, uh, about 2 a.m. Wednesday, and then they bring it up uh, through Meridian and Tupelo. Slower. This is a much slower deal here. So remember now, as you look at this, first off, and we say this a lot, and, and you know, I need to say it again, don't focus on that center line because it will change. I guarantee you that will change more than likely. Uh, this will impact a lot of the southeastern United States. But in terms of the flooding potential and the possibility of small spinoff tornadoes, the greatest chance of that will be along and east of the center line. And if this track is correct, that is very much like an Ivan track. And that puts Alabama in that bad east side with potential for flooding and maybe a few tornadoes. And again, we stress we don't know how strong this will be at the time of landfall. Could it be a major hurricane? Yes. Most guidance suggests it won't. It would be a one or a two. Uh, but one way or another, the flooding rains and the spinoff tornado possibilities are, are quite high. The big question is, will there be potential for widespread tree damage in inland Alabama? Uh, like in Ivan, recall so many trees went down and so many people had no power. And that will depend on the intensity of this. And we just don't know that yet. But I guess at this point, you have to prepare. We've got a hurricane watch for the Gulf Coast. All of the Alabama Gulf Coast, obviously, since obviously on this track, we're in the bullseye. All of the Mississippi Gulf Coast, the Florida Gulf Coast, down to Apalachicola and southeast Louisiana. Uh, so we mentioned this last night. Preparations need to be started now uh, by filling up your vehicles with gas and getting all the supplies for extended power outages that you need, medicines and things like that. Everybody that lives on the Gulf Coast, you know what you need, but you don't want to wait until there are shortages and the lines are horrible. Quite frankly, it's going to be bad today because the hurricane watches up. We tried to encourage people to do this yesterday. But again, we stress that will probably change again. Uh, let's go in there and look at the uh, GFS. This is the uh, operational run, the o o 06Z run. This is the latest in house. This is at noon today. And again, you can see how we have a, a very light northerly flow aloft here. But again, a lot of times big hurricanes create their own steering currents down there. Uh, down below that, there's a look at uh, Isaac tomorrow. The GFS brings it northwest. And remember, the GFS is on this northwest track with no north turn. Comes in towards southeast Louisiana Tuesday. Wednesday, it's still on the Louisiana coast. And if this is right, uh, we would be in that wet side. It would be kind of moist and showery on Wednesday, but no flooding and no spinoff tornadoes here, more than likely. Thursday, it's moving into Texas. And I know a lot of people are asking, hey, I'm going to the uh, this uh, Alabama-Michigan game. Well, understand... Uh, well, let me just show you what happens. That's Thursday. Here's Friday. It turns north. This will recurve at some point. Uh, and if this is the case, Dallas-Fort Worth would be on the dry side on Friday. Uh, there's Saturday as we start the weekend. You can see a shortwave trough to the north. That's going to pull Isaac up into it. And the weather in Texas on Saturday should be gorgeous for that uh, for that Alabama-Michigan football game. You know, but again, if we've got flooding rains here Wednesday, that's going to be an issue out there at the airport, you know, trying to fly out if you're flying out Wednesday. And we might see some issues into Thursday, but for the game itself out there, game day should be fine. Uh, Sunday, we stay moist on this track. We stay in moist air the whole time. And uh, there is, uh, uh, again, a lot of questions we just can't answer about specifics. And certainly seven days in advance, we're not going to worry about that. And just for fun, there's the end of the forecast. This is September 11th. Uh, the westerlies are still up north, and again, that suggests kind of a showery, warm pattern at this point. Uh, we encourage you to check the blog, alabamawx.com. We have a lot of updates, running updates over there. Uh, and uh, I, I will try and crank out another video here later today. In fact, I will crank out a video by uh, uh, sometime late this afternoon, and of course, we'll do that uh, throughout the week as Isaac approaches. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, enjoy your Sunday, and God bless.